In today's video, I want to steer away from the latter videos that I've been making from the rabbit hole that I've been going into just for a little bit because I've been finding a lot of very interesting studies on how it seems that we can modify, control, or influence our very DNA with our thoughts. Um, going into the whole theme of quantum consciousness, and we have a lot of research uh, behind it, and we are on the brink of realizing what this all means and what's behind a big question, what's behind the quantum phenomenon and how consciousness is at the root of it, despite the fact that a lot of, the a lot of people in the scientific community deny it and are blatantly opposed to, to this, despite that the evidence is showing otherwise. So nobody has the answer. No, no, not uh, scientists, neither philosophers, no one has really uh, a full answer, but if you look into the literature, into, you look into the reports, into, you, look, you stack everything together, it's, it's pretty obvious, a lot of people just know this. So, in this video, I want to steer away from the concepts, from the themes, from all of that, and just focus pragmatically, what does this all mean to our lives, what, what, how do we apply this research pragmatically and I, I, uh, into our day-to-day -day lives and I wanted to make this, uh, to upload this video on, 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 our, on the playlist called Pragmatic Philosophy, but I realized this is no longer philosophy, we have research backing this up. Uh, indeed, 2022, as of making of this video in 2022, the first half of 2022, we had the first consensus statement for the future research of near-death experiences from where experts in the field are talking about it, are coming with conclusions, and are setting the guidelines and the foundations for the future research of what they're calling recalled death experiences. They're not calling them anymore near their experiences because clinically people are dead when this happens and they come back with a story and we cannot ignore it anymore. And so I talked about this uh, before I made a video about it. I talked about the implications in the uh, going forward with consciousness research and NDEs and a little bit of a more scientific setting. I'm gonna link it somewhere on the screen, you can find it below. But today I want to focus, I want to laser focus and emphasize into one of the most important things about this research, uh, what it's showing us about us as humans, as individuals, and how this research is suggesting that our lives have value, have meaning, and there could be purpose to them. Before I move forward, I would like to remind you that if you want to join the growing discussion on consciousness and would like to be notified on the latest scientific discoveries and theories surrounding this topic and how they connect to ancient mythologies and philosophies, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, as I'll try to upload at least one video per week as I continue with the outline. I currently live in a very large city and one of the thoughts that often crosses my mind when there are events or where there's a, when I see the busy streets is seeing this sea of people and it makes me think how there are millions and millions of us, so many people, all of us with our very own ideas, with our very own fears, with our dreams and aspirations and each and every one of us thinks of ourselves as important, we think that we matter, but when we think about it, how many people have lived in the history of Earth itself, our ancestors, do we really matter? It seems that we're just recycling each other, even if we go into the ideas of reincarnation, do we really matter? And even if we go into the literature and the reports from these um, studies on consciousness and from the literature, we find that one of the main elements and the main conclusions that people gather from these experiences is that we are all one, we are not separate from each other. So a lot of people often come to the conclusion that our lives don't matter, us as individuals we don't matter and we shouldn't have uh, desires or aspirations, it, 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 it goes into a very ascetic philosophy and it reminds me of the Buddhists and the hardcore Buddhists where they completely let go of the self, of the ego and try to reach this communion with the larger consciousness. I don't think there's anything wrong with this because I think this might be at the core and at the nature of who we are and it helps us let go of the, of the self 
itself in a way that can be both therapeutic and perhaps, as the literature suggests, it might be one of the goals that we are to aspire to what else? To becoming something larger than us, to, 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 to become one with the cosmos, one with what we would call quote-unquote God. I am not sure at the moment what is the final purpose, but I know what the research is suggesting. And if we look at the nature of life, at the nature of who we are, and how there's this whole process on Earth of us uh, perhaps reincarnating or being born into life, having a full life with wishes and desires and aspirations and fears and doubts and experiences, and how all of this seems to be engineered and how all of this seems to have the perfect conditions for these experiences, it seems that there might be some value in our lives. And while many philosophers in the past have talked about this value or this lack of value, many thinking there's no value in life and there's no purpose in life and all we should do is seek for pleasure and escaping suffering, as I mentioned, today we have evidence that can help us gather new conclusions and as I said I want to be pragmatic with this and I wanted to make this uh, upload this video on pragmatic philosophy but we no longer have to go into philosophy to start gathering our ideas about this we have research and now I'm gonna I'm gonna probably put a picture on the screen from from that research that I talked about and you can find it below of the first consensus statement for the future uh, for the future research of near that experiences or how they're calling it now recall death experiences and the thing that I want to focus on is this quote-unquote life review as I mentioned amongst the many conclusions they gather uh, right there uh, C it says a meaningful and pur purposeful review of life involving a critical analysis of all actions intentions and thoughts towards others. We're talking about thoughts and intentions, not, not, not just actions, not just physical acts. We're talking about what goes, goes on within our minds, within our, well, a lot of people would say our brain, but I don't think it, uh, this is happening in the brain. I think this is larger than, than we think, and I'm putting all that evidence in. You can go on the playlist and ongoing research. Intentions and thoughts towards others. How we acted in life. A purposeful purpose of of our lives critical analysis of all actions this is a signature of ndes or our um recall that experiences they're calling them uh this this picture that is on the screen right now comes from a from an article and the article is based on a published study as i mentioned all the links are below these are experts in the fields people working in universities and going through the research this is one of the conclusions that they gather for the future research of near their experiences now the fact that this is happening either as a as something just happening in the brain because and that that is that's a lot of that's one of the conclusions that a lot of the skeptics are just coming up. It's just an illusion. It's just happening. Why is it happening? Why is there this sign in the brain to have this uh, happen? We don't know. But if we look at it pragmatically, this means that whatever intelligence behind the design of this process at the time of death is very concerned about the way that we live their life and how we acted towards others. What were our thoughts? What were our actions? What were our intentions? So as I mentioned, a lot of people think that there's no purpose in life, they live a very ascetic life, it doesn't matter what you do, it's all, um, all about love, and this is what a lot of the, a lot of the experiences come, come up as a conclusion, it's all about love, love is all that matters, this is the message that is conveyed when they are in these different dimensions and they meet these beings of light and so on and so forth. When we think about this, this means that there is purpose behind the very life that we're living right here, right now on Earth. It's not about just letting go of the ego, about not doing anything, about being inactive. It's about thinking, why is this important? Why are my feelings towards others important? 
If we move away a little bit from um, the researcher neither experience, then we go into antigens. And they were to make a consensus statement for antigens, which uh, there's a lot of research going on right now because Big Pharma wants to go into antigens and they have confirmed the existence of these quote unquote entities that you meet in these dimensions when people go through the psychedelic experiences. I've talked about this. You can find the link somewhere on the screen right now and it's below as well. We can see something similar happening in these experiences. Well, right now I'm not going to go into the detail of what happens in these experiences. One of the major themes is the one of healing, the one of these entities just giving us ideas of how to solve previous tra trauma or how to uh, become better beings to see the things that matter in life. They show some sort of curd uh, of course there's, there's a variety of experiences and some are incomprehensible some are people just traveling through the cosmos uh, but some have these themes to them where these entities care about them and just like in near their experiences uh, the experiences feel what they call love and they they feel this loving sort of communion with these um quote-unquote entities now are the entities just creations of our brain of our minds or do they exist on different parallel dimensions that we travel to all of these questions exist in the research of antigens but regardless the question still remains what why does our brain or do these entities care so much about our lives this guy it, it, this means there's intrinsic uh purpose, meaning, and value to our individual lives, to what we do while we are alive. And then there is this whole interest in what's happening in our lives. Why? Why do they care? Now, there's this question, as I said, is this all uh, just our minds playing tricks or whatever, our quote-unquote subconscious mind, which in, in case we would have to redefine what exactly is a subconscious mind. Why are we seeing jesters and why are we seeing these ancient gods and goddesses that present to people in geometric shapes and whatnot? If it's only our brains why a lot of people are claiming that these entities are telling them that humankind is some sort of an experiment for these non-physical beings to to experience to come and incarnate into life how how does a brain randomly generates that idea there is communication and the same communication happens in, all throughout the research on altered states of consciousness going into the alien phenomenon, into the non-human intelligence contact, into channelings, into near-death experiences. People are seeing all these entities, these light beings who are telling them these things. Uh, I'm not going to go into that. I've been going into that in the, in the past and I'm going to be going into it in the future. But for this video, I want to talk about the overarching theme is that whether it is the entities, whether it's a sudden realization where is people just feel in love and think they met quote unquote God the theme persists and that is that there is value to human life there is value to individual life whether is the brain generated why does the brain care about your life why does it make you have a live review there is a lot of skepticism and a lot of ridicule to these ideas, to these topics, to these theories, but this is the bulk of the research. We cannot ignore it anymore. This is research now. Um, this is what the reports are suggesting. Little by little, as I said, uh, in the last 5, 10, 15 plus years, all these studies are stacking up and everything is pointing towards the same direction. We can no longer deny, and there are a lot of theories about this, whether we are creating heaven or we are just being recycled into life by an alien race or it's just our brain creating these random things. There's a lot of theories behind it. We're in a process of evolution. We're in a school. By a high, just Everything is coming from a higher intelligence. I'm not going to go into that right now. I will be going into that in the future, but as a basic conclusion, Based on the research and the data, we can see that whether it is an outside intelligence, an entity, quote-unquote entities, or brain, whatever it is, when we go into these experiences, these altered states of consciousness, the, one of the biggest ones, something that we are all going to go through, there is a consistent 
effort by these entities or by this higher intelligence or by the brain or what, whatever you want to put the source of the phenomenon from to make us feel comfortable, to make us feel loved, to make us analyze our lives, to make us grow, to make to, to heal ourselves, to heal our past traumas. And the implication in all of this is that despite there being millions of humans alive and even more that have already died and gone through the cycle, there there seems to be importance, relevance, purpose, meaning and value for each individual human experience. And if the research is correct, all of this is being recorded somewhere and in it exists it exists somewhere readily available for recollection. All of these points toward a larger scheme of things that we are barely beginning to understand. If you're on the path of finding the truth about reality and our purpose as humans on Earth, the information that I have to share concerns you. After a lifetime of research in philosophies ranging from Buddhism to the occult, I've encountered themes and patterns along some baffling information that is beginning to be seriously studied by science. A rational divine outline, The Ghost of Jesus, is the first iteration of this project, where I analyze the message of Jesus without dogmatism, fanaticism, or religious bias. You can find my work available on Amazon on the link below. If you find this work valuable, consider subscribing, sharing, and following me on social media as it will help others in the same path to find this information. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.